What's up everyone, I am Jason C and today on The Master Drum I am excited to bring you one of my favorite videos to make each year, my top five go-to and available bourbons. It's always fun to make a top 10 bourbon list every year, but let's be honest, most of those you know, end up being really hard or impossible to find for most people. So for me, it's always interesting to do this list each and every year because my tastes do change, new bourbons become available and less available. And with COVID happening in most of 2020, I found myself reaching for some different expressions when compared to my list from 2020. So here is my criteria for picking these top five. First rule is if a bottle of any of these bourbons get low or run empty, I know I could go to the store, walk in and replace it that single day. Remember, what I have available in my area can be different from where you live, so please keep that in mind. My available may be different than yours, but I still try to pick bourbons that are available to most. Secondly, and this is the tough part, each selection has to be from a different distillery. Honestly, there are probably about three different selections from Wild Turkey or Old Forest or even Jim Beam that I could put on this list, but it's more of a challenge to choose only one selection from a distillery. So make sure you let me know down in the comments your top five based on what's available, where you live, and also making sure that each selection is from a different distillery. With so many special releases that seem to get released every week for $150 or $200 or more these days, uh, more bottles are becoming allocated. It's good to know that these bottles are always out there to grab when I need them and are cheaper and in some cases even better than a lot of the tater baiter bottles that everyone likes to chase. Plantains! Let's get started. Surprise, surprise, a new entry to my list this year is Chattanooga 111 Cask Bourbon, the Tennessee High Malt. This 111 proof high malt bourbon has a unique mash bill of 75% yellow corn and a 25% combination of malt, including malted rye, caramel malted barley, and honey malted barley. Now it's only about two to three years old, it's unfiltered and retails for about 45 bucks. So why am I loving this lately? Well, it's unique, it's affordable, and it's absolutely delicious. I actually have this in my glass right now. And to be honest, when I first had this, it, it was weird. It's different. And if you're used to Kentucky bourbon, it will definitely make you step back a little bit. But once this thing opens up, there's toffee, there's butterscotch, then these dark fruits come in, raisins, this dark medium toast with honey on top, a nuttiness characteristic comes through. All I think from that Tennessee high malt. Really the uniqueness is what sold me on this because there really isn't anything like it at this price point on the market. If you're into trying something different, bold and affordable, you won't be disappointed in this one. So glad this is available to me today. All right, next up, some MGP. Yes, this one made me very happy when it released because this is delicious and available and it's non-overpriced MGP. This is George Remus bourbon, bottled at 94 proof, non-chill filtered and retails for about 40 bucks. So MGP or Midwest Grain Products for a long time uh, and currently produces a lot of whiskeys for startup distilleries, but has been selling their juice under their own label. George Remus bourbon is MGP's flagship label. He was a Prohibition era bootlegger and the brand name was acquired from Queen City Whiskey Company in Cincinnati. Now, is the label kind of ugly? Yeah, I think it is. But the whiskey is delicious if you like that high rye MGP profile and you don't want to pay a lot of money or search the world to get it. This is all vanilla, caramel, orange zest, cinnamon, nutmeg, and oak. Great mouthfeel for being non-chill filtered. I absolutely love this stuff. With all the high price MGP out there, why not just get this from the source for a really good price. Number three, I don't think it's a big surprise here to most of you, it's Knob Creek Nine Year Single Barrel Reserve from Jim Beam. This is still a bargain, 120 proof single barrel offering for around 45 to 50 bucks. That's always available. Now when the bourbon boom started, a lot of the major distilleries were unprepared and we saw a lot of age stated bourbon start to lose those age statements like Knob Creek because they just couldn't keep up with the demand. The nine year age statement on Beam's Knob Creek was a casualty during that time, but it has now returned to all its glory to let you know that the youngest possible whiskey in this bottle is nine years old. That's older and cheaper than both Booker's, Blanton's, and only one year off from Henry McKenna that has gotten really hard to find and more expensive these days. 
This stuff is all beam. It's heavy caramel, vanilla, honey roasted peanuts, cinnamon, cracker jacks, and, and a lot of sweet oak. Now being a single barrel offering, these can end up you know, deferring in flavor a little bit. Uh, some of them get a little bit more fruity, some get a little more cherry, some dark fruits. Uh, but being a single barrel, they can defer a little bit, but that's part of the fun. Now at 120 proof, I know this could be a little bit strong for some people, but this does really well with some ice, add some water to it to proof it down a little bit. It's still big, bold, and delicious, amazing value, and always, always available on the shelf. Uh, this might have been my toughest selection this year, but only because I love everything that Wild Turkey does, mostly. This was tough because, you know, I love Wild Turkey 101, I love Russell's Reserve Single Barrel, which was actually my number one on last year's list. Uh, you have Kentucky Spirit, but the one I kept going to over and over this past year was Wild Turkey Rare Breed. Wild Turkey is still the underdog in my opinion to me, even though it's still gotten a little bit more credit over the last few years during the bourbon boom. I think people that are trying it again, you know, maybe for the second or third time, are realizing just how good Wild Turkey is. With Wild Turkey shedding a little bit of that roughneck whiskey stigma, I think Rare Breed, especially recently, is the one that stands out the most. It may be the star of the show being 116.8 proof. Uh, that's reportedly a blend of six, eight, and 12 year old barrel proof bourbons for only 45 bucks. So why did I pick Rare Breed for my turkey choice in 2021? Because the bottlings and blend from 2020 have been phenomenal in Rare Breed. Maybe there's some more 10 or 12 year in there or something because the balance and strength of flavors have been nothing short of special. Vanilla, red fruit, caramel apple, cinnamon spice, charred oak, orange peel, some brown sugar and clove on the finish. It's just the, the balance and the, and the flavor in this bottle is just second to none. I think the recent bottlings are really showing the blending artistry of Eddie Russell. And for 45 bucks, this is one of the best values in bourbon overall. The folks that know about Rare Breed, know about Rare Breed. The ones that don't, well, those guys wait in line for Blanton's. So number one on my list was number two last year, but in my blind tasting, this took the top spot. It's the darling of the Whiskey Row series. It's Old Forester 1920 Prohibition Style. The Volstead Act of 1920, which initiated prohibition in the USA, granted permits to six distillers in Kentucky to continue to bottle bourbon for medicinal purposes. Old Forester was one of the chosen six that continued to be produced as medicinal whiskey on Louisville's famed Whiskey Row. During that time, all whiskeys had to be bottled at 100 proof, and with a barrel entry proof of 100, the Angel Share would have created a 115 proof whiskey after maturation. So to pay homage to this era, Old Forester released 1920 Prohibition style bourbon at 115 proof to represent the rich flavor profile this bourbon had over 100 years ago. Now this retails for about 60 bucks and continues to be a true example of how an available bourbon can kick the shit out of most allocated and unavailable bottles that people still wait online or enter lotteries for. This is chocolate covered cherries. You get some uh, spicy oak in there as well. A little bit of cinnamon Teddy grams in there too. A hint of that quintessential banana flavor as well. And man, I just love this stuff. A mm, little bit of a smoky finish there, but yeah, more chocolate, more cherry. Just an amazing bourbon and my number one go-to and available bourbon for 2021. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed my top five go-to and available bourbons for 2021. Don't forget to leave me your top five in the comments. And remember, they all have to be available from different distilleries and also available in your area. So if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram, find me on Twitter. Uh, like I said, let me know what your top five is. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. So cheers and go get some good bourbon. These are all delicious. Take care, everybody.